court is now in a 15-minute break. It is unclear who the next witness might be. Joining us now from the Dispatch, senior writer and author of In Trump's Shadow, David Drucker. Good time, David, to, to take a step back and talk about the politics of all of this. How is it playing? Well, I don't know that it's having a material impact on the presidential race at the present time, and I think that's what's so interesting, Katie. I mean, there are so many real-world implications for trying an ex-president for the outcome of the trial, um, and obviously it's, it's, it's consequential. And yet, from a political standpoint, we see Joe Biden and Donald Trump still locked in a dogfight. Trump is up in most polls, though not all polls. Uh, there's some. There's one school of thought that says while he's on trial, he's doing less rallies and he's less active on social media, and therefore not reminding voters who were exhausted by his first term of all the reasons why they don't like him. On the other hand, we know that this trial, uh, depending on how the outcome of the trial, could have political implications that that damage him. So, you know, I'm supposed to be able to tell you it's this or it's that, but really we're in a wait and see mode here. Um, I'll put up a little bit of polling that we have in terms of the hush money trial. Um, here's what people, according to um, Ipsos, uh, believe, Reuters Ipsos poll. 64% uh, uh, believe it is very or somewhat serious, these charges against Donald Trump. 34% not say it's not at all serious. Um, it, it is hard to determine what's going to land. Of course, we are still many months away from the election, and this would have been kind of a, a dead zone in terms of campaigning anyway, because usually in the lead-up to the conventions, once the nomination is already secured, uh, presidential candidates take a bit of a break. But I, I wonder, is this reaching, or could this reach, or if if it were to reach anybody outside of Donald Trump's base, how would it how would it do that? Well, I think it needs enough media coverage. It's getting that. I think it needs to penetrate with these voters that this is somehow more egregious than they're used to with Donald Trump. I mean, what, look, one of the things in a normal pre-Trump era circumstance, this is a really big deal politically that is basically all bad for Trump. But we're in an era where, number one, the price of admission with Donald Trump is already built into how voters are looking at this. And number two, if you look at Joe Biden's approval ratings and their concerns about his age for the next four years, they're not thrilled with him. And so the voters are looking at this like an imperfect choice. Now, outside of Trump's base, there's room for Joe Biden to grow and succeed. And he, he definitely can and may come on extremely strong. His organization is better. His ground game is, is more robust. He's raising more money. He's got so much going for him, and he's got a record to run on. But when you look at the numbers, at least for now, what you find is that voters aren't necessarily focused on Donald Trump's foibles, yet another set of foibles. It's not like it's something new that's disappointing them. What they're focused on is the economy and all of the issues that voters are always focused on. So again, could be very damaging, could not. We just really don't know. Um, by the way, Donald Trump and Joe Biden have, uh, I guess, agreed to debate each other. Joe Biden said he would debate Donald Trump on uh, the Howard Stern show, show earlier today. Donald Trump um, has put out on social media that he doesn't believe it, but in case he does, anywhere, anytime, any place. Uh, David Drucker, really good to have you. Thank you very much.